Welcome back, I'm Rob Lang and this is my game Clomper. You live inside a mechanical ladybird called a Clomper, which you can control by laying pipes to power machines with steam. The outside world is a hellscape that you explore from inside the Clomper, picking up resources and completing quests. If that sounds like fun, like and subscribe for more. In this video, I hit two milestones explain how my procedural environment is going to work and show how I cut up a model into tiles. That's quite a lot, so let's get stuck in. I'm delighted to announce that I have 300 subs. I'm somewhat aghast that you watch my ASMR blogs, but I'm thrilled that you do. Thank you. The other milestone is that I've been working on Clomper for just over a year. Happy birthday, Clomper. Don't get too drunk. Oh dear. I'm going to build up the procedural environment algorithm in small steps. To begin with, I want flat ground to walk on and hills to avoid. This blend model is the simplest case. You can take this simple model and cut it up into tiles. One for the ground, one for a flat wall facing that direction, one for a corner, one for the top, one for a wall over there, and so on. I'll explain how later. When we cut them up, we record which pieces are next to each other, called adjacency. This corner can be next to this wall, but these two opposite walls can't be next to each other. They must have this flat piece in between. That's a side effect of how I've built the model. I could build a world by placing tiles myself, but I want to play the game, and it would be boring if I had built the environment too. I'm going to use an algorithm called Wave Function Collapse. There's a great blog post by Boris the Brave, link in the description. It goes a little bit like this. Create an empty world that we want to generate. For each square in the world, we make a list of all the tiles we've cut up. Pick one world square to start with. We'll start with where the clomper is. Choose one of the tile options. In this case, we choose a flat one because we want the clomper to start in an open space. When you choose a tile, you are crossing off all the other tiles. That's called collapsing. Now take each neighbor square of that collapsed one and cross off any tiles that don't make sense. For example, we'll call this square the north neighbor. The north neighbour can either have a flat square, the wall that faces the flat square, or one of the two corner pieces. All the other pieces don't make sense, so we cross them off. With crossing out finished, we're left with four possible tiles on that square. We don't know which one it will be yet, but we will come back to it. Now starting with the north neighbour, we go to its neighbours and cross out those tiles that don't make sense. The north neighbour has four options, so its neighbours in turn will have a few more. We need to keep repeating this until every world square is collapsed, or they only have one possibility. I didn't get it working in time for this video, but here's where I got to. Each world square has a grey gizmo mesh for each possible tile. They're all overlapped just for fun. The yellow world square is the square we're currently looking at. The red ones are neighbours. As I click the button, the algorithm moves through the world squares, removing any tiles from the grey gizmos that don't fit anymore. You can see here that it's picked a tile that isn't correct, which suggests my adjacency is broken. I'll get that fixed next time. Oscar Stolberg mentioned that he'd like to build his models in one 3D model and then cut them up automatically. That sounded like fun. Here's how I did that. I'm going to use Blender so that I can select faces more easily, but all the cutting up is done in C-sharp in Unity. CodeMonkey has a great tutorial on how meshes are built, linked below. I've decided that my tiles are 200 units by 200 units. So I line up my tiles starting at zero and ensure polygons don't go over the 200 boundary. For each triangle, I find the smallest vertex, divide by 200 and round down, 
and that will tell me which tile it's in. I then make the vertices and the triangle in a new mesh. Here is my starting mesh and here are all the pieces I cut it into. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're all well. Take good care of yourself. Bye bye.